By gaining millions upon millions of monthly listeners, creating a pretty successful label, and generating a tremendous amount of hype surrounding his name, Playboy Cardi is currently one of the hottest rappers in the scene. Even though he only has 3 projects out, his career seems to never stop expanding, especially with his next album on the horizon. But what if I told you that for him to get to this level, Cardi had to ruin others chances of breaking into the mainstream, thus putting Cardi in shady situations where he was only friends with his peers to help boost his career. So join me today as we delve into how Playboy Cardi used other rappers in order Order to reach the top of the rap game. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Playboy Cardi's narcissistic ways can be traced as far back as 2014 where he met a well-known producer named Ethereal whilst in high school. Following him being introduced to Ethereal, the two quickly started to develop tracks together. Beef and Young Zanho were swiftly released and would slowly jumpstart Cardi's career. While Ethereal and Cardi were building up a relationship, Ethereal was a part of an underground collective called Awful Records. Due to this connection, Ethereal would eventually introduce Cardi to the group, to which he met Father, the founder of Alpha Records. Upon meeting Cardi, Father rapidly took a liking to his music, which is why Father decided to add Cardi to the collective. Father was also a buzzing rapper and producer at the time, which is why Cardi was featured on his song, Fake AF, as well as having production credits on Playboy Cardi's track titled Mercedes. Cardi then went on to mention how he went insane on Father's beats. Man, though, we eat around father, man. They had the production going crazy, you know what I'm saying? My flow on those beats is just professional, so like, we just took off from there, man. As the relationship kept evolving, father felt as if Cardi slowly became his protege, which caused him to keep promoting him on his socials as well as bringing him on tour. Now, father wasn't the only one in Awful Records that Cardi developed a strong relationship with, as the rapper and producer, Mexico Dro, slowly started to develop a relationship with the artist. Mexico Dro was a prominent figure within the scene at the time, with him being most known for the tag Plug. that you hear in the beginning of some tracks. By collaborating with Cardi, the two would create such hits like Plug with Rich the Kid and Kodak Black, Chill Freestyle, and Cardi's first official release across all platforms, Broke Boy. All these successful hits would begin bringing Cardi massive amounts of attention surrounding his name, hence why his career grew tremendously whilst in the underground. Since his name was bubbling, it caught the attention of New York fashion designer and model Ian Connor, who had close ties with ASAP Rocky and The Mob. Around the same time, Father wanted to officially sign Cardi to Awful Records. After all, they weren't an official label and only a collective. However, Ian Connor supposedly heard about this and immediately flew Cardi to New York to sign him under ASAP Rocky's label, ASAP Worldwide Global Entertainment, also known as AUG. To make matters worse, Father and the rest of Awful Records were completely unaware that this was happening, as Cardi would never say goodbye to them before heading to New York. In fact, after he officially signed to AUG, he gave his former group the ultimate betrayal. For starters, he'd allegedly stole one of Father's merch designs and claimed he was never with Awful Records. I was never Awful, awful Records. I was never Awful Records. Shout you out, never been awful. I was never Awful Records. It's ASAP Mod. Which was severely odd since during the time he was seen with the collective, and he used a rep that he was with them. Awful Records. After this, Cardi would get exposed for scamming all the producers he was working with at the time, by not paying for any of their beats. This included Mexico Dro, which led a tremendous amount of confusion amongst the fans, since the duo were known for making insane hits, leaving many extremely perplexed on why Cardi would do this. Then right before the release of Playboy Cardi's self-titled project, Mexico Dro would take the Twitter live to diss Cardi. You can't buy no fucking beats. Everybody know that shit. That's our favorite rapper. That's our favorite rapper, bro. Fuck that nigga, bro. Nah, for real. Tanner ain't doing no fucking smoke with me. He ain't trying to shoot. He ain't trying to shoot me, bro. I swear to God. Strangely, when self title dropped, it would contain credits from Dro. With him producing the track Had To and having his vocals on the song Let It Go, Mexico Joe instantly became aware that these songs were released to the public, thus prompting him to take to Twitter to aggressively tell Cardi to take them off the project. However, Cardi would completely ignore Dro and keep the songs on streaming platforms, to which Mexico Joe responded to Cardi on Twitter by saying, I ain't got shit coming with Playboy Cardi, fuck all that. Cardi then responded by saying, I love Mexico Joe, we good, trust. Which juxtaposed how Dro really felt at the time. Interestingly, Dro would then have writing credits on his debut studio album, Dial It, with the song Top, prompting fans to believe that they worked out the issues. Sadly, this wasn't the case, because from this point forward, Dro and Cardi would not interact until Mexico Dro got out of jail in 2019. He would try to hit up Cardi, to which Cardi would just completely ignore Dro. This would be the last we heard regarding the two, which is really disappointing to many fans. After all, these two create such iconic tracks that help jumpstart Cardi's career. But it looks like Cardi only had the intention to use Dro for his beats. He never truly cared for how his career would have gone. 
Instead, this was only another mere moment where the artist has power over the producer. Nowadays, Joe is focused on his rap career with him dropping a tape about a month ago. Nevertheless, the success he potentially could have received from working with Cardi has been erased entirely, overall preventing his chances of taking his career as a whole to a mainstream level. As for Father, he seemingly gave up on his career with his last solo track releasing back in July of last year thus having another career that Cardi could have potentially assisted. Surprisingly, Cardi did not do everyone in Alpha Records dirty because he would still be close with Ethereal. Ethereal would state that he was one of the first to find out about Cardi's label, Opium, and clarified that he's not signed to the label yet. I'm not signed yet, but that's like, you know, me and him are like this, so. He even went on to declare that he doesn't expect Cardi to chill with his friends all the time, due to how popular he is. But when he comes home to Atlanta, they can always chill with each other and chop it up. When he needs me, he hits me up and like, you know, like, it's like we left off right where we were before, you know what I'm saying? When he finally gets to Atlanta, we link up, you know, chill. In the modern day, numerous fans praise Ethereal for pioneering his career. After all, he was one of Cardi's early producers that started putting his name on the map, which is probably why Playboy Cardi refuses to leave him in the dust, as their most recent snippet together was from the Whole Lotta Red V2 era. Now, it is extremely evident that Cardi only used awful records to aid the start of his career, by only using well-known producers and rappers to promote his name. Despite that, there are bigger opportunities that can come from working with Ian Connor and ASAP Rocky, resulting in a new era that they will help establish. To become the global sensation that he is today, Playboy Cardi had to work with his longtime friends Uno the Activist and Thousand Band Fani. Cardi's relationship with Uno can be traced as far back as when they were kids due to them being family friends. This bond between the two eventually led to them creating music around the same time, with the earliest traces of them working on music together being in 2012, where Uno was seen in Cardi's first music video. The two would be introduced to Fani at a house through mutual friends later on, ultimately creating a group between the three, called Splur Gang. Now, in a newly found group, Uno, Cardi, and Fani started to release music together that brought them attention within the underground. Cardi being the most prominent member within the trio led to New York stylist and close friend of the ASAP mob, Ian Connor, finding out about his music. After some time, Cardi would go to New York to link up with Ian through which he met ASAP Rocky, who was just coming off of a number one album on the Billboard 200 and selling over 146,000 copies first week. Once Rocky met Cardi, he then took him under his wing, hoping to build Cardi into a superstar by being a mentor which resulted in them developing a strong relationship. Eventually, Cardi introduces Uno and Fani to Rocky, making the four very close friends. Overall, having the three of them be heavily associated with the mob. At this point in time, the three had massive buzz surrounding them and it would only keep growing, with the releases of What and Villain Thug significantly boosting their careers. Sadly, Splur Gang would not have any longevity as Cardi would slowly start to link up with the mob more. This is because the ASAP mob was a huge group at the time, so why wouldn't Cardi capitalize on the opportunity of affiliating with the mob? After all, Rocky took quite a liking towards Cardi, so it would only make sense for him to repeatedly be seen with one of the top rappers within the space to increase his career. But this is when things slowly started to take a twisted turn. As for starters, AUG affiliate Bloody Dior sprayed his nerf blaster at Uno the Activist. Although Cardi and Uno were practically cousins from how long they knew each other, it wouldn't stop Cardi from siding with Bloody Dior throughout the whole altercation, even calling him his big bro. To make matters worse, the people Cardi was siding with dissed Uno and exposed him of snitching. A few months were passed by and Uno publicized how he truly felt about the situation on Twitter. He'd start off by explaining, this ain't no diss, but I would never sell my soul for the fame. I would never change on my family over a pussy. I would never friend my brother's enemy. I would never talk down on family. So dude, don't fuck with him before they meet. All that devil worship feeding statues is out. This tweet was a clear remark towards Cardi as he chose the ASAP mob over his longtime friend. Uno will continue his Twitter rant by saying, dudes look at you in your eye and say, I can stick your style because we're family, then never see you again. This tweet was another reference towards Cardi since around the time many claimed that Cardi stole Uno's style and flow. The tweets wouldn't stop here though because Uno then went on to declare, I am not a villain thug, alluding to the track they have together. Then said, If a bro shot my brother, I would never call the shooter my big homie, especially when these guys babies out here. Once again being another jab at Cardi since this was a response to him calling Bloody Dior his big brother. 
Uno continued going at Cardi by name dropping him in his Free Smoke series of diss tracks, as well as speaking about Cardi's betrayal on the song Satchi with Freestyle. Following all this, Cardi would DM Uno acting as if what he did wasn't a big deal and started toying with him. He would even start to threaten Uno by claiming that he's getting smacked up. If it wasn't obvious enough, Uno and Cardi's relationship was going down the drain. However, this wasn't the only relationship Cardi was ruining because he would also start conflicting with Thousand Band Fani. It all began when Fani was falling out with fellow Atlanta artist Lil Yachty. The reason behind their beef was due to a girl that set Fani up for the rapper Slime Cito, just so he could steal his chain. Slime Cito would give the chain to Yachty, to which he'd post a picture of himself wearing the chain not knowing it was Fani's. Upon finding out it was Fani's, Yachty instantly took to Twitter to apologize to Fani. Nonetheless, Fani didn't believe Yachty and instead thought Bo was the one who called the shots to steal his chain, thus prompting him to shoot his nerf blaster at his vehicle after one of Boat's shows. Luckily, Fani missed and no one lost their life. Even though he missed, it didn't stop Fani from calling Yachty. Call me like a dumbass after they shot and started laughing, like, like he was a joker or something. I don't know, it was weird. After some time passed, Fani would be staying at a hotel. Coincidentally, Lil Yachty would also be staying at that same hotel. As Fani went downstairs, he noticed Yachty's bodyguard surrounding him. At this point in time, Fani has completely forgiven Boat and wanted to congratulate him for his recent success, which is why he starts to walk towards Yachty. Instead of this being a kind reunion, Fani would start to get jumped by Boat's security. Now as many of you might be wondering, how does Cardi get involved in this situation? For starters, a week would pass and Playboy Cardi would do a fair interview with Lil Yachty. This rubbed Fani the wrong way since why would Cardi ditch a good friend of his and rather link with someone who did the friend dirty? Well, to Cardi, this simply was a calculated business move. This is because Yachty was blowing up around the same time with his hits like One Night, I Spy, and Minnesota. So being associated with him would bring fans towards Cardi's name. Which is why Cardi would feature on Boat's next project, Nothing to Prove, with the song Get Dripped a year later. On top of all this, there would even be rumors depicting Cardi talking down on Uno and Fani towards ASAP Rocky. Fast forwarding to modern times, and Uno and Fani don't hate Cardi but can't fully forgive him. After all, he is a longtime friend of theirs, but from what he's done, Cardi truly ruined their potential of reaching the next level. Fani would even give his insight on the whole altercation on his Instagram live. Cause really I fuck with, I fuck with bro, but I know he like a bitch nigga. You feel me? He just be on some pussy shit. I'm on some family shit. If niggas, if niggas don't want to be family cause they think everything got to be a contest now, fuck them damn nigga. When you get back to your senses and your right mind though, hit me up bro, fuck with me. But all that sneak dissing and t telling people this, that, the third and shit, when like behind my back, that's some bitch shit nigga. Now, Fani is still pulling decent numbers with him recently dropping a project. As for Uno, his career is still afloat but not to the level it could have been if he was still working with Cardi. Now looking at things from a career standpoint for Cardi, he simply took the selfish route by leaving and halting his close friend's careers in order to build a legacy behind his name. Ultimately revealing that not having second thoughts about your childhood friends is a dark reality of becoming a star within the scene. Yeah, Uno and Fani aided in Cardi's growth, especially Uno since Cardi practically took his whole flow. He plainly couldn't stay with them if he wanted to be at the top. At this point, if you're beginning to think Cardi owes them a lot and should aid their careers, you're probably right. But that's something Cardi's not going to acknowledge. The year is now 2020, and Playboy Cardi still hasn't released his sophomore studio album, Whole Lotta Red. With his last album being released in 2018, fans were extremely dire to hear any news on the project. They would finally get any possible answers regarding Whole Lotta Red in the beginning of that year. What came to many surprise though is that Cardi would broadcast to the world that he's planning to build a label throughout the whole year. This ended up being the origin of when he planned to build his empire through his label, Opium. However, the Opium label he built back then isn't the same as we see today. International Hefe, Little Unky, Cabo DTE who also went by Cabaret, and rising Atlanta superstar Ken Carson were close affiliates with Cardi to help shape the Opium label we see in modern times. But as many of you may know, only one of those names I just said went on to have a successful career under Cardi's opium label. That being Ken Carson, who's been performing at music festivals and landing at the 11th spot of the Billboard 200 with his recent album, A Great Chaos. To best uncover what exactly happened to the other three, let's head back to around the end of 2019. As this would be around when Cardi was being seen with Capo DTE, International Hefe, and Little Unky extremely frequently. Cardi would aid their careers by connecting them with his producers, which could be seen in a snippet that International Hefe previewed back in September 2020 that had production by Art Dealer and Richie Souf. 
Now, regarding Capo DTE relationship with the Atlanta rapper, he seemed to have a tight bond with the artist since he was seen chilling with Cardi, being at his shows, and being in the studio together. In fact, Capo even attended Playboy Cardi's whole lot of red release party at the end of 2020. On the music side of things, Little Unky would drop three songs in 2020, one containing a feature from Ken Carson. Capo would also drop three singles them being Mother Nature, Doe, and Bird Fly. While International Hefe only released one track in 2020 called Joker. Comparing this to Ken Carson, who dropped two full EPs, Teen X and Boy Barbie, which did have features from Hefe and Unki, it really seemed as if Hefe, Capo, and Unki weren't taking their music careers very seriously, which is something to take note of for later. As we enter 2021, things would quickly take a turn for the two out of four members. It all began when Ken Carson would drop the deluxe to his EP titled Teen X Relapse, depicting once more his serious work ethic. This would be when Cardi realized the opportunity to centralize his label around Ken. After all, he is putting in the work by going to the studio making bangers and releasing them. If you look at Hefe and Capo, they would barely drop any songs throughout the entire year. Nevertheless, when looking at Little Unky's discography, you begin to notice that he dropped multiple EPs, singles, and a full-length album called Apes on Opium all in 2021. Overall causing Unky to be mad at Cardi for helping out Ken rather than him because to Unky he put in more effort towards his music than Ken. It wouldn't help either that Cardi was promoting Ken much more than Unky, Hefe, or Capo. This would cause him to announce in a lost Instagram live that he left Opium. Fans actually understood the reason behind Unki's decision, with one Reddit user even declaring that it was a smart move. Then a month later, International Hefe would get into his own altercation with Cardi when he leaked one of his snippets on Instagram. Although this is where things aren't entirely clear, it seems as if Cardi felt a way about Hefe leaking a snippet to one of his songs. As we all know, Cardi is extremely mysterious about how he moves within his career. No one truly knows when he will pop out and preview new music himself. In fact, most of the snippets people acquired for his upcoming album, I Am Music, aren't from him directly, which is a smart marketing strategy since it preserves his rareness within social media. So with this in mind, Hefe didn't really demolish his marketing strategy, but there is a possibility that Cardi didn't want to snip it out. Even though there's a speculation, Cardi is known for retaliating against leakers. By him delaying his projects when hundreds upon hundreds of unfinished songs get uploaded to the internet. Taking this into account, Cardi potentially felt aggravated towards Hefe since he basically did the same thing. Alongside this situation transpiring, Hefe released little to no music since being a part of the collective, thus having Cardi to make the ultimate decision to remove him from the label. International Hefe was not the only one being reckless during this time because little Unki would start to crash out. For starters, a year would pass by and Cardi and Unki supposedly settled the differences behind the scenes. This would be seen when Unki previewed a track with Cardi in February 2022, to which he said he wants to track out within the summer of that year. It hit me back about that song in the summertime. Right now, I'm folding on Azo opening, going up, and then I'm gonna shoot some videos to it and drop some videos. But by the summertime, I probably drop Remember Me. Obviously, many fans of Cardi knew that this was probably never going to drop. As an associate, you probably know that as well. But this wasn't the case for Little Unky, because he thought that Cardi would clear his feature for him just like how he did for fellow Atlanta rapper Little One DTE. Nevertheless, this wasn't the case and the song ended up becoming lost media. Due to this, Little Unky would go on live with Little One DTE a month later to expose Playboy Cardi for blocking him and capping on what he raps about. I mean, we love now, this was really lame of Unky to do because it made it seem as if he was retaliating against Cardi since he didn't clear his feature for Unky. What made it worse is that Unky would lie about Cardi not knowing one of his close affiliates, Meagle Bliff. Funnily enough, Migo and Cardi would be seen on FaceTime together multiple times, overall depicting how little Unky was cloud chasing by trying to expose Cardi. But it backfired on him, and in the modern day, it seems as if little Unky isn't around opium at all. Instead, to cloud chase him even more, he would make a song that sounded extremely similar to him, causing many to believe that it is an official Playboy Cardi snippet. Once the song dropped though, it ended up being one of Unki's biggest songs due to people thinking it was Cardi. To capitalize on the situation, Unki would take the opportunity to focus on his music career by dropping throughout the entirety of 2023. What's interesting though, is that if you look at the description for the track on YouTube, it is copyrighted by Playboy Cardi, which made people believe that the single was originally Cardi's and Unki stole it then made it his own. However, in reality, this probably means nothing since anyone could have copyrighted the track by tricking the copyright system to think they own the song. 
So I think what's up with that is just like, you know, people want to make a bag. So a new snippet comes out and then they just copyright it themselves using the content ID shit. More recently, Anki would allegedly address him not being seen with Cardi as much on his Instagram story. He would state, y'all rap dudes gay. Stop putting me in your shit. Talking about who I hang out with, I am Unky. Nothing more, nothing less. I'm tired of putting my cape on for a fuck dude anyway. You don't stand on business, bro. We stand on morals and principles. Stay your ass in the hills. This story probably reveals that Unky's and Cardi's relationship probably disintegrated into the abyss. Truly showing how Unky's former relationship with Cardi is getting to him. At this point, some of you might be questioning, what happened to Capo DTE? Well, to be honest, he still had a strong relationship with Cardi. In fact, when asked about how he feels about Cardi, he'd clarify how he still messes with him. Yes, bro, I'm still cool with me and, wow, and Cardi, bro. I, I, I nephew, yeah, Those are my little, little brothers, bro. I'm still cool with them. Now, it's 2024, and Playboy Cardi's opium label consists of Ken Carson, Destroy Lonely, and Homicide Gang. While International Hefe and Little Unky aren't around anymore, they set up the groundworks for Cardi's label. Even though Playboy Cardi tried setting them up for success, they ultimately could not take advantage of the moment. He simply had to make business moves in order for his empire to evolve. Nowadays, Anki seems to be focusing on his music by dropping numerous music videos on his YouTube channel. As for, Hefe seems to be attempting to revive his own career with him recently dropping a music video as well. To finally wrap up Playboy Cardi's story with his old collective, he once more had to leave the ones closest to him behind. After all, Unki and Hefe didn't have the drive like Ken did when Cardi started his group. Even though one could argue that Cardi could have motivated them and persuaded them to be more active with their music. At the end of the day, he needed to form a better label if he wanted his reign as a top rapper to continue. Which leaves one thing for certain, and that is International Hefe and Little Unki are nowhere near where they could have been if they were still under Playboy Cardi. If it is not apparent enough, Playboy Cardi had to perform shady tactics to reach where he is today. By leaving awful records for ASAP, his childhood friends, and his own artists, he truly became a global superstar. Which leaves the question of, is it worth leaving the people who helped build you up behind in order to reach the height of your career? Well, that is something I'm leaving for you to decide.